Hi. Uh, now we will be going through the chapter of movement of substances for biology. This is the next chapter that will be uh, that is quite commonly tested. Usually, as an example of a structure question, uh, reason being because of its applicational need uh, areas, and at the same time, uh, it can also be a very nice uh, essay question. The first uh, free response section for pure biology taking uh doing o level or even in uh, in n level science biology uh why is it so because uh, this particular chapter allows the uh, allows the students to be tested on their graphing techniques like how do you draw a best fit line or a best fit curve so and using the graph to actually get some information so um uh, we'll be beginning and generally for this chapter it is actually similar the content nature or the learning objectives that uh, students taking science bio in o level and n level is almost the same if not the same uh, while for students taking pure biology for o level the only uh, difference is actually the uh, active transport section. So for students who are taking pure bio, uh, you need to listen to everything. However, for students doing science bio for O level and N level, um, diffusion and osmosis is tested. However, active transport is actually not tested in your syllabus. Okay. So this is going to be the outline of how the lesson is going to be like. First, we will be talking about diffusion. Uh, second, we will be talking about osmosis. Third, We'll be talking about how surface area to volume ratio affects the rate, the rate of um, diffusion, and osmosis. While active transport is uh, one that differentiates between uh, students who are taking pure bio. Now, when I say pure bio, it's usually the ones who are doing 6093 uh, syllabus for O level bio. Uh, so, what is then this three, uh, the difference between these three uh, in a very generic nutshell? For diffusion, it actually involves um, anything except water, any molecules except water. So, we are talking about uh, liquid. We are talking about gas. You don't really see solids as uh, particles that are involved in diffusion. Because uh, solids by itself generally is actually quite stable. Uh, more movement, it, it happens between liquid and gas, or liquid except water. For osmosis, osmosis can be seen as a subset of diffusion or part of diffusion as it only talks about the movement of water molecules due to the influence of uh, the uh, co uh, the water potential within the, within the scenario. Then, of course, the surface area to volume ratio is basically a ratio. Uh, ratio can be, if you remember your primary school math, ratios can also be re uh, represented by a maths uh, divide sign. So let's say um, a particular number A is to B, where in this case, its surface area is to volume ratio. Uh, this can be represented in the form of a uh, equation which is surface area divided by volume then you'll get a number and there and of course the larger the number it means that you have a higher surface area to volume ratio meaning if you have a large number you will actually have a faster rate of diffusion or osmosis if you have a lower number then you have a slower rate. So they, generally, this is what they meant. And then, of course, active transport is, uh, sim is actually similar to diffusion, only that it moves in an opposite direction against the concentration gradient. So, uh, and of course, it needs energy. So active transport, because it's being active, you will need energy. And um, in diffusion and osmosis, this is what we call passive. Means no energy, uh, passive transport, where no energy is needed. Okay.
So generally, it's a very brief summary of what you're going to study. So under learning objectives, please memorize the definition of diffusion, uh, for especially for uh, students taking science bio in the end level. Uh, this can come out as a two mark or one mark in the in your paper two uh, paper, uh, question, question and this could actually give you easy marks that you should score. For science bio students or, and pure bio students taking O level, uh, generally this can come out as a also as a structure question and um, for such definition it may cost you two marks. Uh, there were some years that they actually asked for three marks uh, but generally there, there is two main definitions that you need to know which is diffusion and osmosis. So before we look at that we let's look at uh, how do particles move. So if you look at your if you have done chemistry, especially in under the chapter of kinetic particle theory, you will realize that um, particles do move. And uh, due to from the kinetic particle theory, you also note that uh, particles move randomly. So when you know that particles move randomly, okay. So in, imagine this scenario where the particles are actually all free floating. The only way that it's actually changing its direction is when it gets bumped to each other. So imagine if you are in a classroom and you are playing catching, then you all like to play. Uh, then you all like to you know push each other. Where each student is one particle. So when you start to push each other, even though you are running in a straight line, your direction, will your running path will actually change due to your friend pushing you in a different way. So that's how we see randomness within this particular scenario and that's how your particles uh, move now at the same time the other consideration is how does it move so if let's say you have a particle that is actually situated at a very very high concentration area so let's say at the corner of the classroom uh, all this one circle represents one student which is all one one particle they start to coincide in one area and you have some areas that are very free. Okay, so something like this. So how would then your particles start to move? Particles will then slowly move in a direction where you are from a lot of deep, uh, from a high concentration to a low concentration. This is only for diffusion and osmosis. So imagine that if everyone stuck at one corner, right? It feels very hot and warm and then you want to escape. So that's similar uh, behavior um, of what your particles are doing. They start to move away. Then you will start to see maybe this particle, these particles, they start to, oops. Yeah, I'm not sure how to move this, but just imagine this particle that was originally here. Now it's moved to here, where there's an area of lower concentration. So it's moved. Then this was proceed to the point whereby all the particles will then try to uh, balance itself out such that there are some region at the corner and there is another at the area where there is low. Now, one misconception that a lot of students uh, uh, that have is that the, once the particles move to that area, it stops moving. Like, for example, after I have, so let's say all my particles over here, if they have actually moved it to here, then in this scenario, it's not going to move anymore. The particle stays stationary. At no time does a particle stay stationary. What will then happen is, to maintain this balance in concentration, particles will move. Top, I mean, uh, will move to each other's corner at the same rate. So over here, you will see that overall there is no net movement of molecules. Net doesn't mean no net movement doesn't mean there is no movement. Uh. no, the meaning of net here means overall. Whereas, what this means is that movement. In and movement 
out is the same, same rate. Okay, so to give you an example, think of it as you are again in a classroom where there is two doors. door one and over here you have door two so imagine you have students moving into the classroom why maybe because as of now the classroom is very you have about three students and then outside of the classroom you have 20 students so Generally, when students, so you will want to move from a high concentration to a low concentration uh, area. Okay, and when you move, right, so this is, so people will use door one to actually move in. Okay, we will talk about door two later. So slowly when students start to move in, you will come to a point where there is maybe um, eight students and, sorry, So you will have, so you have a total of 23 students, maybe you have uh, 8 students here, and you have 15 students moving in inside already. What's next? Then you see there is then this imbalance of concentration. So students will start to flow out at the same time, where maybe you've got 15 students, they start to flow out, then you will start to have 12. And over here, it will be maybe initially there was eight. Then um, we got maybe three students moving out again. So when you see uh, uh when you see this scenario, when it starts to starts to balance it out each other, uh you realize that uh the number of uh, students tends to come in and out. So over here, what we call is there is no net movement. As the number of students moving in and out of the door for door one and door two is more or less the same rate. Initially, there is a difference in rate because you have more students moving into the classroom first. Then there is no one going up. But then after that, right, Fusion will not occur anymore, or the overall movement of the molecules, the particles will not move anymore when there's the same rate. So that's the meaning of no net movement. Okay, so what is then the definition of diffusion? So this whole thing is the definition of diffusion. Now, the second thing is where will the marks usually be placed, or how is it marked? So the first mark is the key point, the keywords that you have to use for your exams is because diffusion is a process where you are talking about overall movement. So you must have the net movement of particles in which they move from a higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. This is the second important point you need to put. Third is down a concentration gradient. Now, what is the meaning of down a concentration gradient? It means that not much energy is required. Okay. Or even you could, I could say it's no energy needed. Okay, we will be talking about what we meant by concentration gradient, but please memorize this. This is very important. As I say, one mark here, two marks there, all these small little one marks eventually will be the one that uh, help to boost your results for your examinations. Okay, these are simple marks. So then again, so what is this concentration gradient? Concentration gradient is the difference between two regions where we are actually looking at areas that has very, uh, like a space that has a lot of particles. So that's what we meant by high concentration. So you can see this high concentration. And in the region like point B, you would see there's a lower number of particles. So lower concentration now uh, for this to happen right you have to assume that the space is confined or fixed you cannot oh, uh, do this thing about concentration when you always look at the space that is getting bigger bigger why because concentration is actually a consideration of number of particles with respect to space 
So let me give you an example. Uh, let's say I have 10 particles. Okay, 10 particles in maybe a space unit of one, one space unit. So my concentration will be 10. If let's say I have 20 particles in a space unit of also one, and I got 20, then I would say the concentration here would be greater as compared to 10. Same thing can happen if let's say I have uh, 20 particles, but I put these 20 part same particles right in a bigger space, maybe two space units. This would bring down my concentration to 10. And therefore, you could see that the concentration here and here would then be the same. And when the concentration is the same, then no diffusion can occur because uh, there is a lack of the concentration gradient. Another thing to note is that diffusion, do you actually need a partially permeable membrane? This is commonly asked in MCQ as one of the few option statement where the, to see whether the statement is true or false. Uh, do note that partially permeable membrane is not required, uh, but you not required for diffusion. Um, but it, so in a sense, it's optional. If you have, it can still work. Don't have, also can still work. So it is not required in this case. So if the question ever asks you, can diffusion occur if uh, there is a presence of a partially permeable membrane? Diffusion can still occur. Okay. So um, this is back to how is concentration gradient related to diffusion. See over here. Movement of particles is random. This is based on the theory of kinetic particle theory. So for this, I'll be creating a separate um, uh, list of lessons to, to deal with the chemistry chapters in, I think, the next few days. So um, please remember to subscribe and hit the notification button so that um, all these videos will actually be uh, updated for you. I will also be leaving my Instagram uh, in the description box below so you can also follow so that you get updated um, information with regards to what all these are, are my videos and uh, other forms of uh, short study tips that you can do. Next is uh, particles will also diffuse down the concentration gradient and uh, and this is the key and this is the one that usually can be quite confusing steeper concentration gradient means faster rate so what this actually meant is just imagine a mountain or slope okay so if you have a very gradual slope the rate is actually slower as compared to as compared to a same concentration gradient between point A and B, but it's deeper. So this is, in a way, faster rate. Now, what determines this steepness? This steepness is being determined by the concentration. So if you remember, just now we talked about, um, we are able to measure concentration, right? So in chemistry, it will be mole per dm cube and or grams per dm cube. So in this case, right, let's say the higher your concentration, that means you have 20 students in one corner of the classroom, and then you have 10 students in another corner, that gives you a concentration gradient. Now, which is faster? If let's say that within the same room, I have, I have maybe uh, 20 students at one corner, but I only have one student in the other corner. This would mean that more students would actually rush to that area, that space area. So do take note that uh, over here, right, um, this is in the units of concentration grade, uh, concentration, and that's how we compare, okay? So uh, one very common uh, school experiment or, or experiment to actually visualize diffusion is we use copper two sulfate crystals. So by dropping copper two sulfate crystals in the gas jar, these would then um, actually uh, copper two sulfate crystals will then slowly diffuse or move around the gas jar. 
So when you are when you when you so what you'll start to see is this very dark coloration over here. Then it will slowly the particles will slowly move to areas that has lesser concentration. Then slowly over time, it will be all situated around the the gas jar and and generally that's where it will be evenly distributed okay and of course copper 2 sulfate is a blue crystal if you are in sec 1 and sec 2 i believe you would have more or less done this uh, experiment if you have the opportunity to grow a blue color crystal using crystallization so it's a combination of evaporation and uh, uh, filtration so that that is the copper 2 sulfate crystals that we are talking about and of course, um, again, as I say, diffusion across a membrane is, it can occur with or without a partially permeable membrane, but it can do a membrane. So that's what we meant by permeable membrane. So do see here that they never stop, they never say anything about partially. It's a full membrane, as long as it, uh, even if it's partially, you can still move through. Okay, now, now we have understand the mechanics of uh, how diffusion occur. We can then take into consideration where does it usually happen in our human body and especially and also in the plant body because this is part of the uh, example that you all may have to cite as a, in the structure question if they ever ask. But more or less it actually happens in the MCQ where they give you a scenario, an example, and they ask you, oh, what is this? What is the process involved? If they give you a structure question in the science bio N level, you must state, is it the diffusion or the osmosis? So the more chapters that we learn in biology, then the more that we'll be able to understand the different components of how uh, diffusion actually occur. So over here, you will see that the lung, within the lungs, there is actually gaseous exchange. This is where your exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide happens within the lung as at the area of the alveoli you realize that that whole process is diffusion. We will come to this chapter more in more detail under respiration at a later part of the V uh, at the later part of the, or the next few videos. Okay. So what happens is when you breathe in, there's a very high concentration of oxygen. Okay, O2 is oxygen. This will then move towards an area where there is actually low concentration of oxygen, which is your starting part of your red blood cell start of the thing so red blood cells travels in this direction and then the end okay so in this case oxygen will then move from a high concentration to a low concentration past the alveoli to your blood vessel but at the same time your red blood cell here has a very high concentration of carbon dioxide co2 is carbon dioxide as compared to the lungs because when you breathe in, you do not breathe in so much carbon dioxide concentration. Then, and then your body undergoing respiration produces more carbon dioxide, and therefore it will actually travel out. So there is this travel movement, okay? And then when oxygen comes in, then again, then you will see that the red blood cells here has a high concentration of oxygen, while the lungs have a lower concentration of oxygen. So this would then then it will be the next process where you will breathe in and out again, such that when you breathe in, you take in more oxygen. When you breathe out, you are removing carbon dioxide con uh, contents within your lungs. So this helps to maintain a concentration gradient between your lungs and the, and the blood vessels in your body. Okay, so uh, this is where uh, we'll be moving on to the next uh, portion, which is on osmosis. If you want to... Uh, stop you can stop then um, if you want to continue you can actually continue take a break and then uh, you can come back again so now we'll be talking about osmosis so what is the key crucial thing again you see this defined osmosis now this is very crucial huh? and um, and through the definition of osmosis it means that you have to remember the definition uh, you have to remember the definition and of course again cite the examples so this is crucial. This can give you a lot of marks for a few years in O level uh, science bio. You, you have seen that osmosis has been tested quite a few times. Uh. Uh, so this is actually one component that you should focus on. 
Now, in comparison, diffusion and osmosis, we try to actually be more concerned of um, most of the time they like to, I mean, the chapter of the portion of osmosis usually comes out for exam. So if I'm a student, I will actually focus more on osmosis as compared to diffusion. But as I say, um, I have no crystal ball. I do not, I can't predict what will come out for exams. It's just that um, I would, I would invest more time in osmosis uh, to, to actually have a better understanding. So first of all, before we look at osmosis, we have to understand partially permeable membrane. So if you have, uh, un, uh, if you are not very sure with what is partially permeable membrane, then please remember to uh, watch my previous video on the chapter on cells. And uh, over there, I do talk about how the cell membrane works as a partially, the having the property of partially permeable, being partially permeable. Okay, then, okay, over here, what we will see is, let's say in this particular scenario, a partially permeable membrane is basically, uh, just imagine it as a wall that has holes that allows substances to move in and out of, uh, to pass through it. And it, due to the nature, the size of the holes, it will then be able to restrict the movement of particles that are too large or too small. So for example, let's say I have a wall here. I have a very big hole, and then I have a very small hole. So due to this size here, it will determine the size of the molecule. Like let's say I have a very big molecule like this. I realize that for my this particular molecule, I'm not able to pass through. It's always moving here in this scenario, but I can't pass through because it is inhibited by a wall. However, if I have a molecule that is very small, very small, okay? If it's small enough, I am able to pass through this particular wall in and out. So this is how uh, your membrane actually controls uh, movement, uh, substance moving in and out. And of course, in a human body or any body, you have a range of molecules of different size. So what will happen is, only the small molecules are able to pass through. Only the small molecules are able to pass through the hole, whereas the bigger ones, are not able to pass through. Now, why is this key difference? So water is a very amazing molecule. So, so when we talk about sucrose solution here, there is actually two, mole two main molecules that are in this solution. There is the water molecule and also the sucrose molecule. Okay, so sucrose molecules are very, very large. So think of it as this molecule. And then your water is maybe small. So what will happen is, your sucrose molecule is too large to pass through. Okay. Whereas your water molecule is small enough to pass through. And when it's small enough to pass through, you realize that uh, only water molecules are able to move. And that's the nature of osmosis whenever there's just the movement of water molecules. Okay. So, um, so this is one, uh, this is how we actually uh, the purpose of this partially permeable membrane in handling osmosis. So for osmosis, as you can guess, it requires a lot of, it requires a partially permeable membrane for it to work. Now, when we look at this kind of scenario, they say 10% sucrose solution. What this means is 10% is made of sucrose and 90% is made of water. Same thing here when we are talking about concentration, 5% uh, sucrose and 95% water molecules. So what actually happened is, if you remember concentration gradient, right? 5% of sucrose versus 10% of sucrose, sucrose has a higher concentration. So ideally, it should move in this direction from A to B. But then because of this partially permeable membrane, partially permeable membrane, PPM. This restricts sucrose movement, therefore it doesn't move. Hence, diffusion doesn't occur here. Okay. 
Now, if we look at water then, water has a 90%, is 90% in A, point A, while wa water in the other area is 95%. So where would the direction of water be moving towards to? It will be moving in the opposite direction from B to A. And when it moves from B to A, you're, even though you have a partially permeable membrane B, but then it is the water molecule is small enough, it is able to pass through the partially permeable membrane. So number one, it must focus, must uh, it must abide to the concentration gradient or what we call the water potential gradient. Second thing, it must be water due to the PPM. Then together, if we fulfill this, we call it osmosis, the process osmosis. So you can guess where the direction of water will be moving. It will be moving from B all the way to A. Now, what does this mean? This means that your water level, the solution level, initially it starts at the same length. But after osmosis has occurred, you will start to see that at B, there is a drop in water level and there is at A, there is an increase in the solution level. Uh, this is because more water is moving in towards A. Okay, so you, uh, we will have another few examples later on to take a look at how this actually works. So generally, this is partially permeable membrane. So osmosis, uh, is where the partially permeable membrane allows the water molecules to pass through, but not the sucrose molecule. And mainly, this is because of the size of the particles. Okay, so um, so how do we demonstrate osmosis? That's one experiment. The other experiment is you having this tisophanol and a cellophane paper. Now, why? So sometimes in exams they like to use visking tubings or uh, cellophane paper. Uh, to actually act as the partially to act as the partially permeable membrane. So this is one um, exam question that they can ask. Like, what is the property of the using a visking tubing? What's the property of a cellophane paper? Or if you ever see a question that has these two things being used, right? Your first assumption is: Are they actually talking about osmosis? Um, there's a higher chance that they are talking about osmosis in that sense. Okay, sucrose solution. It can be sucrose solution. It can be some other solution. As long as when they in exam when they give a solution, right, there will be one particle that is bigger in terms of size of molecule and another one that is smaller. And the smaller one is usually water. Um, then of course, what happens is in water there is a. We can say we can assume that hundred percent is water. And maybe zero percent is sucrose in the sucrose solution which is this dark blue color um, image here you would see that maybe in this uh, i'll give it a number maybe you have 10 percent sucrose and 90 percent water so what you will realize is the water potential within the water pot okay, so water potential is something like uh, water concentration, but they actually meant very different things. But for um, your O level and N level, you can just make this assumption that they meant the same thing, just written differently. Okay, uh, so what happens is uh, in the the water potential within the beaker has is actually higher than the water potential in the sucrose solution. So water, where will it move? Water will move from the beaker into the sucrose solution. So what will happen then? The second thing that will happen is this area here, the water, the, the water level here would actually goes up when the water level here would actually go down. So this will create like a suction force. Uh, and this time we also see this principle in the next few videos that we will be seeing. Uh, because we'll be discussing about the chapter of uh, transport in plants, which also use this property. Okay, so this is an experiment to demonstrate osmosis. So how do we then see osmosis? We look at the difference in the change or the change in the water levels. So what is water potential and how is it related to osmosis? So uh, water potential is basically um, 
the tendency of water molecules to move from one place to another. So just take note that uh, when we talk about water potential, it must always be an environment comparing it with another environment. So maybe point A has a higher water potential than B. If this can be high or you can say low. Now, it will be wrong if you write the statement without the comparison. It's like A has a high water potential. This is an incomplete statement because potential Water potential is about comparing between two scenarios. So to phrase your answer better, please include two scenarios where one is higher than the other. And um, the, in bio, they also like to use this term uh, dilute and concentrated. The meaning of dilute right, means that it contains more water molecules. Contains more water molecules. Meaning if you have a more water molecules, you will have a higher water potential as compared to an area where there is, is concentrated which contains lesser water molecules. Okay. However, if you think about this, it could also mean that if I have lesser water molecule means I have more solute. Solute means the solid part of it. Huh? It can be sucrose or whatnot more solid, solute molecules, and if it's dilute, means I have lesser solute molecules. So when we talk about diffusion, we are looking at this. We are looking at these solute molecules. When we are talking about osmosis, we are looking and comparing between water molecules. So please do not be mixed up and um, be very clear with which one are you comparing. Uh, I don't really see a question that was being tested where they give you these two scenarios and you compare both at the same time. Usually you will only have to compare one variable, which is either water or is it or the sucrose or the solid molecules. Okay, so a water potential gradient is only established when there's actually a partially permeable membrane. And a difference in water potential. Okay. So this is a key thing that you have to remember. Osmosis is the net movement of water molecules from a region of high water potential to a region of lower water potential through a partially permeable membrane. As I say, the first key mark is net movement. If you say movement alone, you won't get the mark. It must be net movement of molecules. First point. Second point is the higher water potential to a region of lower water potential. Second point, and the third point is partially permeable membrane down a concentration gradient. So this is the point. So one, two, three. Uh, depending on the marking scheme of your exam, point one and two may be one mark, and uh, point three might be one mark, or it can be uh, point one, one mark, then two and three, one mark. Uh, it can be if it's a three marks, which you rarely see in school exam, but maybe in O level. Uh, it will be one mark each. Uh, so this is how we go about doing it. So how does osmotic effects live, uh, affect living organisms? So this one, right, um, it will be quite, it's, it's actually very important. So um, please read your textbook, um, the Martian Cavendish Biology Matters or the Discover Biology for Martian Cavendish. Uh, these are very crucial uh, things that you need to know in order to actually understand the whole part. And uh, so I will stop my video for here. I will continue this in a separate video. Okay. And of course, please remember to subscribe and like this video as uh, it goes a long way. And of course, uh, I'll be sharing more videos. And of course, hit the notification button at the bell so that you'll be notified of the newer videos coming in.